Hey everybody, it's Rothbard's Disciple here. I'm bringing you guys a video. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be showing you guys how to do a little bit of coding. As you can tell, I, this isn't my first run through or my first take on this video. But anyways, uh, if you followed my last video, uh, or not my last video, it's like three videos ago or two videos ago where I showed you guys how to download Python. Uh, what we actually want is uh, idle. Um, you don't actually type in Python first. Just type in idle and it'll give you this. Um, you'll, it'll open up a Python shell. We don't want the shell. We want to open up new. Um, this is where we're going to actually be doing our coding. Um, so the first thing I want to show you guys is just the print function. And we're going to be printing strings for the most part. Um, so when you use the print function, uh, as you can see, it turned the color of this print function to purple. That just lets you know that, hey, this is going to do something. Um, strings show up as green. You know, if I take this out, it doesn't show up as green. So that's not a string. And just so you guys know, a string just means like uh, letters. Like you want the letters that you type in on your keyboard, okay? Um, and so w when I want to run this, I just want this to print out the words test over in my shell over here. I hit run module F5. Uh, generally speaking, you'll actually just hit F5 rather than go up to press run. Um, but it's going to make you uh, save your save your thing here. I'm going to overwrite this. You generally speaking don't want to overwrite old files that you have or old coding um, documents or whatever because when you learn stuff you want to be able to reference your old code rather than having to look things up online. Okay, so you can print out tests, you can print out numbers. Um, one interesting thing about numbers is you, you can actually uh, print out numbers without them being strings. Uh, we're not really going to do any of that um, just because most everything we're going to have to deal with is either strings or actual files. We're not going to, I'm not going to show you how to uh, hash files today. I'm going to show you how to hash a bunch of strings. Um, but uh, that's just one thing to remember because when you're working with numbers, there's actually a couple different types of numbers. There's integers, there's floating points. Um, I think there's actually one other that might get used, I can't remember, but anyways, when you're working with numbers, sometimes you have to make sure that your numbers come out to be the right type. And again, we're not going to go over that yet because we're just going to be working with strings, but whenever you're working with strings, uh, you always put quotation marks on both sides. And notice also when you use the print function, you put parentheses on the outside. For some reason, whenever I try to print stuff, I always, like my most common mistake is I just don't put parentheses on the outside. But if you don't put parentheses on the outside or something like that, it will give you an error. Um, it, this one just says invalid syntax. And then it points me to where the invalid syntax is. Or I could do something like this where I forget a quotation mark. That gives me invalid syntax as well. And I'm going to go through another error as we get started on the, uh, the hashing. Okay, but when, you're, when you want to hash things, uh, you actually have to import a library. Um, and this just means that uh, the hash functions are not by default going to work. Um, and so you have to import the hash library, okay? Uh, and the way there, I think the reason that they do this is to cut down on resource use, um, just because like if you're not going to use these functions and most people don't hash things when they're writing computer code, you know, then why even have it up as an option? Because then when you're, you know, it, your computer has to search through however many functions it's got on memory or whatever, whatever it is. It's for it's for resource management, I do believe. Okay, but. When we want to hash something, again, we're going to just be using the print function for now. And I, one thing I want to add is that the print function, for the most part, is for um, developers. Um, I hate how everyone does Hello World. You know, I hate how everyone does the same goddamn thing in every goddamn um, tutorial video. It's so gay. But anyways, um, you use the print function to basically show yourself things as you're using it, right? Okay. Um, and so this one, we're going to use the, we don't want to print out hello guys. What we want to print out is the hash of hello guys. So if I open up my hash tool, so, or, you know, that somebody else has coded. Obviously, I didn't code this thing. But um, the hash that I want to get out from hello guys is e2 c9 bc whatever 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 okay so this is what i want now when you want to get the hash of something or when you're in when you're using a library um you write the name of the library so the name of our library is hashlib as we can see right up here 
name of our library is hashlib. Then we write dot. And now we're going to write the name of the uh, function that we want from within this library. And as you can see, it gives us a bunch of functions that we can use. We want SHA-256. Okay. Um, I, I don't know why there's a SHA-3256. I guess that's the third... I, I don't know. I thought SHA-3 was 512 only. I guess I don't understand my SHA algorithms all that well. But anyways, SHA-256 is what we're using. It's kind of the standard. And you don't have to click it from that drop-down menu. It might not even give you that drop-down menu if you're trying to... Whoops. If you're trying to... Um, type that in, um, but you just want SHA-256. Now, we called our library, now our function is SHA-256. Remember, print is also a function, and when you print something, you put parentheses around whatever you're printing. So we're going to do the same thing with SHA-250, with our SHA-256 function. We need parentheses around whatever it is that we are going to um, get the SHA-256 hash of. Now, you might think this is it, like we asked it to give us the SHA-256 hash. If we run it, it'll work. What you'll find out is, no, it does not. Now, if we look at this, and this is one thing that you probably will want to get used to is looking at errors. And um, this is telling me there's an error, and it says, uh, the error is in line three. It's in this line specifically, so they're saying this line, there's something wrong with it. And what it's telling me is wrong is it says Unicode objects must be encoded before hashing. So that might not make a whole lot of sense to you, but what it's actually saying to me is it's saying, look, these are letters. You can't, you, you can't use a hash function on letters. You use hash functions on bytes, okay? So we need zeros and ones. So how do we turn the string, hello guys, into bytes, okay? And the answer is, it actually kind of tells you right here, it says it must be encoded. The, the function you actually use is after whatever your string is, you write dot encode and then two parentheses. Now I've never actually had to put anything within the encode parentheses. I don't know if you ever do need to put anything in within those parentheses, but I never have, okay? Um, and one thing to remember here is you get a lot of parentheses um, when you do this. Uh, the nice thing about parentheses is uh, when you add parentheses, it'll tell you what your parentheses are enclosing. So if I were right here trying to run this without enough parentheses, it's telling me, look, you don't have enough parentheses. That's a weird way of it telling me with the parsing or whatever, but that's what that means. And you can tell if I add one more parentheses here, it's going to enclose everything up to the print function. Okay, so you saw that it just did it for a little bit. It highlighted everything within the print function, so it allows you to print it off. Okay run it and now you'll see I have a hash object and remember hashes whatever when you hash something it always hashes out the, the or the result is always the exact same so long as the input was the exact same right and so if I run it again you might expect to see the same output but you don't right so you see this right here bunch of zeros then 29 e77 this one's a bunch of zeros then 1897 you know nine, eight, whatever, but they're not the same, and you might be wondering, well, what's going on here? And the answer is, is that when you see hashes, as you can see down here, and remember we said if we were hashing hello guys, it should start out E2, C9, BC, whatever, you get this 64 byte character. Well, this is not a 64 byte character, that's a couple bytes, like that might be like 12, 16, I don't know, I don't want to count it. So we're not outputting the right type of output yet, okay? Um, what we want, this is hexadecimal form. So what we have to figure out is how do we turn this hash object, whatever that means, and I, I honestly don't exactly know what that means, but how do we turn that hash object into hexadecimal form, okay? And so in order to do this, we're going to remove this print function, and we're going to call this right here, uh, and again, this right here, without the print function is just this. It won't print out for us because we're not asking it to, but we're going to set this right here equal to a variable, and we're just going to call it the hash variable. Now, the reason why we want to do this is instead of having to write all of this out every time we want to call up uh, this hash variable, all we have to write out now is hash variable. And you'll see if I write print hash variable, and again, now this is where it gets interesting because, again, remember normally before we had to print out things using quotation marks? If I, if I were to put quotation marks here, it won't read this hash variable as the uh, variable that we set up here, right? It'll just print out hash variable the letters, okay? So if we do this, and it just prints out hash variable the letters. But because we already set hash variable equal to this up here, when we run it, 
now it's giving us the hash object. Okay, so this this uh, variable that we have here, our hash variable, um, is equivalent to this, right? It's very nice, very nice. Okay, um, so what we actually need to do with hash variable uh, in order to make it in a readable form like this, and actually to, to have it equivalent to this, is we need to make it a hexadecimal form. Now, the way you make a, a hash object in a hexadecimal form, it's similar to the encode, where it, after whatever it is, the hash object is, like our hash object is hash variable here, because that's what equivalent to this here. We put a period, and then we put hex digest. Now, the hex stands for hexadecimal. I don't know exactly why they say digest, whatever. We're just saying we want this in hexadecimal form. So now, hopefully, when we run this, it, we get something equivalent to that. And as we run it, as you can see, these two are exactly identical. Now, if we want to make this a little bit more interesting, um, we can actually do something where uh, we're, I'll introduce you guys to the uh, input variable or input function, whatever. Um, we're going to create another variable called the input variable. Okay, the input variable equals input. Now, when you're doing this uh, input function, see see how this goes purple again? The input function is like the print function where it's already recognized by Python. And this is going to prompt the user to um, input something. Now, when you do this, it's going to write something over here in our shell. We want it to write something that uh, makes sense to the user. So we're going to say, what would you like to hash? Question mark. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to have it print the input variable. Hopefully this was correct. What would you like to hash? Now, I'm just going to write 7 over here and hit enter. Notice how it printed out 7. Now, I still have it printing out the uh, hash variable digest right here. Um, so I can either delete that or a another good way to uh, make this so it doesn't actually print this out. Um, if I put three small parentheses, um, that, lets it, that means that that's basically a comment now. So that won't actually do anything now. So when I run this, what would I like to hash? Let's go with one, two, or two, three, four, five. And it prints that out. Now, one thing you can actually do in order to make this look better is I can put a space here. Um, and I could actually put in a new line if I want to. That backslash n is a new line. It'll tell me what would I like to hash. 8, 8, there you go. Okay, so the input variable is working, right? Now, the reason why I wanted to show you guys this input thing is because, again, we're not yet working with a GUI yet, but this is a lot more similar to way, the way you would actually want a program to work. Okay, this is asking you what you want to do, and then you tell it. Okay, so that's actually an interactive program. Now, your input variable, again, we want a hash um, version of your input variable. And we have our hash variable up here. I'm just going to delete this because we don't actually need it anymore. And I want to reuse the name hash variable just because it's simple. And so I'm going to say hash variable equals, and now we're going to hash this, hash lib SHA-256 input variable and then don't forget to put your encode. Whoops, uh, and that's it. So now if I were to say print hash variable, and again, remember, when you're printing this hash variable, it is not in hexadecimal form. So to put it to hexadecimal form, we put the hex digest. And as you can see, I did not spell that right at all. Um, and I don't think this hex digest, just so you guys know, you might be asking, how come for the SHA-256 function, you had to put the hash lib first, and this one you don't? I don't think the, or the hex digest and the encode function are not a part of the hash lib uh, library. And you can actually, or, or if you look at your drop-down list of the functions, when it asks you what functions you want to use for the hash library, you won't see either of them in there. But anyways, when I do this, 
this should work out so that whatever I put in there to hash, let's let's try, um, let's just put in Rothbard's disciple. And again, I didn't. This one on the bottom is just here for me to check my work. So what I should get if I put in Rothbard's disciple is CBDOC009. What would I like to hash? Rothbard's. Ooh. That's giving me trouble. I can't actually put in the, if, if you'll notice when I put it, notice how that's changing color. I don't know if this will work. I'll try it. No, it did work. Okay, so when, it, when things change color, that can mean things are going wrong. The reason why this would be an issue is because uh, um, when you use parentheses or, or it's not parentheses, single or double quotation marks, sometimes that can change uh, the way that the computer reads this. I thought it was going to change the way the computer reads this. It just changed the way the color of it looked. So it didn't actually change the way the, that looked. But as you can see, we have a very simple program now um, where it asks you to hash something and it'll hash it and it always works, okay? And so this is, it's, it's very simple. Um, we got through this in what, you know, 10 minutes, about 15 minutes, and you already have a program where you can ask your user for any sort of string input and it'll hash it out correctly. So I hope you guys learned a little bit with this. Uh, like I said, there will be more videos coming out on the coding soon, and then once I get out these videos on the coding, I'll, I'll put up uh, the actual my shitty programs up on GitHub for anybody to copy and paste or whatever and then take from there and then start finishing the application on their own. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was informative. There will be more coming out soon.